here in science this afternoon. And um, it does this by creating a video database, which I'm going to go into and explain how we create this video database of sort of um, video portraits. And also creating face reading technology. And then creating what's called an emotionally coded video engine. And that's working with um, Chris Frith. And I'm going to sort of break it down into these three stages now. And so technically, this is sort of what happens. You know, we've got cameras that sort of sit in the room. Um, they look at the um, uh, key areas of the face. Um, it brings this down to moment, uh, six emotional states. It then looks at a video engine, which is um, you know, sort of emotional code, which I'll explain a little bit later. And it triggers these um, video portraits. So it's sort of a sort of simple schematic view of um, how things should work. Each one of those stages is inherently difficult. <laughs> um, but um, as um, Hugo said, uh, you know, we have all these databases of motion. And the most popular ones that are uh, used in... Um, emotion um, research at the Paul Ekman um, video, research, uh, video database. And I mean, I'm not sure about you, um, I think Paul Ekman is a, quite an amazing scientist. But they're old, they're 40 years old, and if I'm gonna look at these faces, all I'm gonna see is a lady with, you know, a 1960s and 70s hairstyle. So I was quite interesting, and it's in really, really interesting in emotion neuroscience as well, that a lot of the stimuli is actually still. You're looking at one still face. And I was sort of thinking, well, how can we make it more dynamic and, um, you know, how can we shoot a whole new database of emotional portraits? And so this, um, so I've been shooting around the world, actually, and this is from a shot, uh, a shoot in Canada um, early last year. I've shot in Paris, I've shot in Cairo, and I've shot in Brighton, and I'm about to shoot more this week as well. So if anyone uh, wants to be involved, um, let me know. And what it is, I guess, I'm asking people to come into the studio, and it's very... You know, it's quite a well thing to do. Come to the studio, stand in front of the camera and make different emotions. It's not as easy as that, basically. You know, the studio is quite closed. Um, it's about making the um, participant feel very comfortable. And it's about making them to try and feel the emotion. So it's sort of, you know, where it's, it ends up sort of using these sort of psychotherapeutic techniques. And also sometimes, you know, I might show videos of really disgusting things like, you know, the, the spew videos that I did for Hugo to create feelings of um, disgust or, or emotional expressions of disgust. And the participants can choose to talk or not talk, just reveal an emotion on their face or not. Um, it, it's, it's, it's sort of up to them. And... Um, it's, it's quite a full-on process to shoot because people come in and, um, you know, it's quite amazing but a lot of emotions are a lot closer to the surface and soon you seem to forget that there's a camera there and um, a lot of people end up very, very upset or, or a lot of people are more prone to laughter or, but I'd say actually sadness is, is the one that comes through quite a lot and you can sort of get, um, you know, you have to then sit on this and a natural thing, if when someone is sad, you want to make them better, and I've got to sit behind the camera and shoot it. So it's quite a, quite a process. And it's also been quite an interesting process to see what happens um, shooting in different places like Egypt, Paris, and, um, you know, in Canada, the shoots were a lot shorter. The people talked a lot more and sort of screamed. Anger was very vocal. In England, anger's not very vocal. It's very hard to capture any anger. It's quite internalised. Um, in, um, you know, in um, Cairo, yeah, it's quite interesting, very vast, different than Cairo. Um, but so that's been, it's quite, quite interesting to sort of see those cross-cultural cross differences come through. And when I get people into the studio, I then ask them to, you know, to write about how they felt about it. Did they feel like they were acting through? Did they feel like they were feeling it? And these are some of the responses, um, you know, again, you know, some of the responses that, um, um, you know, it was hard, it's hard to do, and, uh, but they seem to get a lot from it, and a lot of them seem to feel, feel the emotion. And we need this, we need them to feel the emotion because we want video portraits, basically digital video portraits that create a visual response uh, a, a, a response of a, a visual expression, a visual emotional expression in the audience because we're using face reading technology here, I'll show you it in a little bit, to assess the facial, um, to assess the audience. So that's the, that is the interactivity. So hence we need to have a database that's strong enough that it, um, that it um, allows a, um, it allows a response. And, um, 
this is a video of some of the face reading technology, but I'll show you that um, physically before. And then we have the problem with, um, a lot of problems with it because it doesn't like dark light. So for this exhibition at um, Lighthouse, we've got all these infrared lights. Um, it doesn't like moving um, faces. You know, this technology is developed in the lab, a lab of very controlled environments. Basically, it's computer scientists sitting at their laptop like that and the face never moves. In an art exhibition, so the faces move around, they have distance, They're, they've got lots of occlusion, they've got lots of other things happening that are just not catered for in these types of technologies. Um, Working with key emotions, six emotions. I mean, yeah, it's, it's quite fun working real time and it takes a lot of processing power. So all of these issues we've been dealing with and we're slowly getting there actually, but it's been quite a process. And um, when I say um, then putting this into an emotional uh, uh, video engine, we're working with Chris Fritz, who's a neuroscientist um, based up at um, UCL and... Uh, basically has this idea of sort of closing the loop. So what happens, you know, when we express different... Sorry. When we express different emotions, you know, what is the, re is the reaction in anger different to what it is in sadness? If I'm sad, what are you most likely to be? If I'm angry, what are you most likely to be? And this is a little slide from Chris saying, you know, if, I, if you do something stupid, I might get surprised, and then I might get angry, and then you'll be like, oh, no, and you'll be like, oh, no, and then we're happy, and we're happy. And it's called this idea of um, closing, closing the loop, the search for empathy, that our sort of transfer of emotion sort of end up, that we both thought, sort of, he says it, in this sort of semi-positive semi state. Basically, what we do is trying to appease any, uh, you know, anger. Um, Chris comes forward with this model of how we work, and then we all sit down and work out, well, how can we develop this into a code? And this is where I'm going to introduce Nadia, actually. And, um, you know, and Nadia, we grab these questions and then we test them. So some of the questions, um, which were, does our video database actually work? Does it sit, um, actually result in a, a visual change of the face? Chris has hypothesised this code. You know, anger, you're going to most likely be angry. Sadness is going to be most likely this. It's a, you know, does this code work? Nadia tested it out. And then also, you know, how are people interacting with it? Nadia's team tested it out. We can read two words. And then I'm, uh, so I work at UCL at the Interaction Centre for Euclid. I'm a computer scientist. And I work in the area of affective computing, where we are trying to create this technology that can recognize emotion in the people using technology, but can also respond, can trigger certain emotional experience, support certain emotional experience, change the emotional experience. You can, I think anybody, you are not angry, the computer will start to freeze and you don't know what it's doing. But so I, I got a uh, grant to work in the clinical setting where we are trying to develop a, a technology that could support people with chronic pain, for example, and, and there is it's about anxiety, it's about depression. And for us, is how do we keep these people active? How do we keep them doing their exercise, moving and coping with their new, uh, with their new condition? And so it's about really uh, making them reflect on, the, on their emotional experience, becoming aware and reacting to it. And that, for this reason, maybe I'm very interested in this project, because it's about uh, realizing your emotion, empathizing with others, and so a lot of introspection and reflection on yourself. But the, the way I enter in this project is about the evaluation, the evaluation of the algorithm that uh, uh, in, embedded in the reaction engine proposed a crease and I think everybody's <laughs> working in some way on, uh, on, on it. And also uh, looking how people, because I come from uh, this uh, more human interaction perspective, looking not at the artist, but looking at, at how human interact with the piece of art, how do they experience this piece of art, what they need, what they want, so that we can try to uh, look and design this, this, uh, this uh, interactive digital art also from that perspective. So this were the question we were asking ourselves. First of all, we saw before, people do react to stimulus, but we wanted to see if the emotional portrayal of 
uh, that Tina create. We are creating this, uh, this emotional response. We wanted to see what were the dynamic of this response, this emotional loop that uh, Tina mentioned before, and uh, if we have created this introspection, this in, in, uh, reflection process. We did. The, we, are, we are doing this with different set of experiments, and, and I'm just uh, reporting here on uh, two of them. One I'll show now briefly some results, and then the one uh, it's, uh, the result of another experiment later in the presentation. So in the first uh, experiment, what we are trying to do is to see if people were reacting, uh, showing different expression to the the portraits. Uh, so. Um, since the mind reading technology, as uh, Tina showed, was not working properly yet, so we tricked our audience by using what is called the Wizard of, of Dolls technique, in which we have a person hidden that uh, do what the software, uh, the intelligent software should, should be doing. So we had our audience, in this case, it was not yet in an exhibition situation, but a more lab condition. So uh, the person looking on the video, the various portrait, Tina, one, one at a time, and we had the camera here, capturing the facial expression of, of the observer, and our human software here, observing the facial expression of the, of the audience, or of the, uh, this person, he, the person here couldn't see what portrait was displayed, so he didn't know, he was not biased by this information, but the only thing he could see was his facial expression. Automatically, using his mind, recognizing the expression of the person, his micro expressions, so micro expressions, it's quite difficult, as we saw before, but trying to do his best. Sending this information to the reaction engine, and then using the uh, soft, the, the, the set of rules devised by, by uh, Chris Fries, they said the engine would react to this fashion expression, selecting one portrait from the database. Okay, so it was simulated, and the, the person was uh, not aware of that. So these were the. the the set of rules that uh, with, uh, Chris Fries were developed and integrated in the engine. And basically what he's saying is that most of the time on this diagonal, the probability, for example, to uh, an happy expression, the probability that we answer with, uh, we mimic the expression is very high. So in the case of happy where uh, most of the time responding with an happy expression, to sad with a sad expression, uh, to a surprise with chance level, uh, uh, well, from a fourth chance, like 50 person uh, answer it with surprise, and disgust again, the most important, the most uh, probable response is again disgust, and angry. But we, have, we can also respond to, uh, to, the emotion, to this emotion with a different uh, expression. And here we are setting some probability that, for example, to, to anger, we would respond with sadness, based on, on, on uh, uh, evolution principle, on social, uh, on social principle, the fact that you may not want to be aggressive to somebody who is already angry, but trying to quiet down and to improve the situation. So this set of probability we have devised based on this principle. And uh, so we wanted to see if kind of this using this set of probability we were getting this response and also if they were reflecting the response obtained. So we are here the observer looking at the portrait and remember that, that our uh, rater is looking to the observer and uh, so we have a rating run time and at the end of, of the experiment we ask a set of questions to the person to know how it felt. Okay, but just quickly some uh, set of response here. We saw that most of the people, uh, most of the participants felt in some way the need to re to respond. So the person, the portrait was smiling, was sad, and they felt maybe they didn't feel, they didn't know they were also expressing the sad, but they felt the need to emotionally respond to it. So we had. Other people thought they didn't really need, but looking at their uh, 
images, we saw that in many cases there was a reaction on their face. But they were, uh, in this case, they were aware of, of this necessity, of this need. Um, when they are, we asked them if they felt they were interacting with another person, there was a kind of a mix of, of a response. Some people, felt, some people felt they were interacting with somebody else, some people didn't feel they didn't create any bond with this portrait. Here are the, when we, we went back and we look at the responses of the facial expression of the observer looking at this, uh, at the various stimuli here, we uh, um, kind of counted the type of uh, how many time uh, a person looking at a stimuli of happy was responding with happy or with another expression. And then I lighted here in red. Uh, the, the fact that, in fact, most of the time we had a mimicry, at least for happy, was very high. So the people tended to, to smile, sometimes consciously or unconsciously, but smile to a smile. And also sad, trigger quite a bit of uh, uh, sad expression in the audience. And a neutral, got a neutral expression. I will tell you soon why there is two numbers. We have a different situation for these three emotions, surprise and disgust. Okay. Why I have two numbers? I just split my set of observer in two, based on the slides before. The one they felt, they were interacting with somebody, so I kind of felt like kind of relation with, with, with a human, and the one they didn't feel they were interacting with you, because we saw there were some patterns, I say, the number of people we the experiment is still very small, so it's just threads or some uh, po possible uh, interesting result. And we saw that, uh, for example, for said, we have more people that felt they were interacting with human and kind of mimicking the same expression, responding with sadness, and we have a, a more neutral expression for the one that didn't feel like, uh, reacting to other people. And for surprise, uh, we had more or less uh, most people in both classes reacting with a happy like amusement and uh, to, to an expression of, uh, of this expression of surprise or again a neutral or very little surprise expression. And with disgust, we have a different behavior between the two groups. The first group that felt interacting with a person, reacting with neutral, probably because there was not an object on which they could relate to. But the second group mainly kind of smile, laugh at it, enjoy the situation. So again, and uh, a an, uh, similar result for uh, the angry, where in this case is the second group that remain neutral, while the first group uh, is mainly neutral but also show different type of uh, expression and sadness to anger or surprise to anger. Uh, one possible hypothesis is just, just amusement that they are just uh, uh, looking at certain portrait they don't relate to but there is a lot of theory and emotion contagion related to counter mimicry and the fact that uh, there are many factors that may affect the way you are responding to another, but that you have a strong relation with that person, you belong to the same group, you are in competition with this person, you have a common object that related to you, that is, is related to the target. So it's interesting how we can think to modify our initial rule, bringing all these factors together. And also the personality of mood, I think uh, you guys are already working on and bringing more beside. So this was the first result. It was interesting to see the real certain pattern coming out and there is more interesting thing hidden behind this pattern that should be integrated in the, in the project. And I believe it. So yeah. So we have here 
when we ask people if they felt they were interacting with, a pe with another person through a video camera or direct, there was some people felt they were, there was another person there and they were interacting with them and that person was answering to them. And for some people this, this uh, interaction really didn't take place. So by analyzing the data we saw that the type of response seemed to happen were different. So the number on the top correspond to the people that answer yes, I felt that I was interacting with a person. And the number on the bottom say no, I didn't feel that. I thought that just were some clips and there was not a real person behind. And I said, this is the number of people we have, it's small, so I can't really take that very conclusive data. But it was interesting to see there were some different patterns that is worth investigating. Thank you. Was, was there any difference between men and women? Uh, no, we didn't find any difference level. It could be, but we need a larger, uh, and then maybe not just uh, really just gender by itself, because I think there are many more uh, factors that come into that, and your temper, temperament and so on. But that, that's something that is interesting to look at. Yes, so I guess what Nadia is saying is that we're, we're proving uh, Chris's code and we're trying to make sense of uh, Chris's code and um, that gets embedded into what's called a, um, a video engine. <coughs> I'm just going to show you a